Hello, good morning. My friend Erin bought me a new book. I actually own two other books by Robert Greene. I own The 48 Laws of Power, which is his first book, and The Rules of Seduction. Each of those books are like this thick, and he's written ones on power, seduction, mastery, strategy, human nature. But what he's done is he's actually summarized all of those different laws of power, rules of seduction, everything that he has learned and knows into this book, which is called The Daily Laws. It's 366 meditations on power, seduction, mastery, strategy, and human nature. For me personally, it was really tough reading The 48 Laws of Power. I also tried to read it when I was in high school, I think, and it was just, it went right over my head. I didn't really enjoy reading it, and so maybe this book will be different. The way that it's set up, it's actually like one rule or like law per day, I think. So like one thought for you to think on per day. And he actually does title the individual thoughts with the date. So like January 1st all the way down to December 31st. So I'm gonna read the first law. If you're wondering, it says, discover your calling. Everyone holds their fortune in their hands. Like a sculptor, the raw material he will fashion into a figure. But it's the same with that type of artistic activity as with all the other. We are merely born with the capability to do it. The skill to mold the material into what we want must be learned and attentively cultivated. And the daily law for today is mastery is a process and discovering your calling is the starting point. I'm just gonna let that one sit and ponder so I don't overdo it. I actually restarted Project 50. I put it as my wallpaper and I actually overlaid it on top of my vision board. So if you've seen my last video, you'll have seen me create this vision board, both the full version as well as the version that I've created for our mobile. So what I just did was added text on top so I can remember all of the things that I need to do for Project 50 daily, which are wake up before 8 a.m., one hour morning routine with no phone, exercise for one hour a day, read 10 pages a day, dedicate one hour towards a new skill, follow a healthy diet, and track your daily progress in a journal. I feel more equipped to do this challenge this time around, and I think my focus and my intention for this year, at least one of them, is actually discipline and just mastering my own accountability and discipline. I think that I've had a lot of unstructured growth in the last couple of years and I think this year I really want to systemize my growth and my productivity. I feel like I'm at a place where I'm very comfortable with my routine and who I am and where I want to be. So I think the next step is to systematize, systemize, I don't know if that's a real word, but to really build a system around this growth and this productivity to be able to continue it and maybe even double it or triple it somehow moving forward. So anyways, discipline is something that I'm working on this year. I do use a habit tracker app as well and I sort of teeter between liking using something more written like my habit tracker that I created in my last video versus something that's more digital like this app. But if you guys are wondering, the app that I use is called Continuo. This is what it looks like. So you get a calendar view and you'll see all these little colorful lines and essentially what you have to do is click the date and you'll see all the different habits that you set out that you want to achieve and once you've achieved something you can just swipe the habit to fill the bar. So this means that if you only halfway achieved this habit, so for example I made the goal of spending 60 minutes to learn something new and I only did it for 30, I'll fill it halfway. So you get a pretty accurate look of how you are doing with your habits. I think for the duration of this new course of Project 50 that I'm trying to work through, I'm gonna use it in Continuo just so I can get that calendar view and count the days towards 50 days. This app is pretty cool. You can see like statistics for your routines and stuff like that. But my favorite thing about it is 
just that it's simple and it's very minimal and it's very clean and this is exactly what I needed in a productivity in a habit tracker app and so I'm glad that this is how this app was built. All right, enough chatting. I'm gonna do a little bit of reading now before I get started with my work day. All right, let's get started with the work day. I'm just starting out checking Slack as per usual, and then I'm gonna check my emails as well. I don't know why work emails. Like I've always, I'm kind of bad at checking my work emails. It's interesting because I check my own emails so promptly <laughs> every single day. But I think it's also just because my work emails is so, there's it's just so filled with spam and sales emails that I will never ever ever actually use or need. I think that's one of the downfalls of being in marketing in tech or maybe in, in any sort of industry. But like I get hundreds and hundreds of sales emails every day. It's crazy from things like people selling user lists or people selling software. It's just, it makes my inbox nearly impossible to actually sort through and I'm not really sure what to do about it because it's not like I signed up for these emails. They just found my email and they're looking to fill it with their sales info. I think the first order of business I have today is actually pretty urgent. I need to bust some screens from our UI UX designer and I want to do this ASAP because it is quite a time sensitive matter because we're trying to get this release out and this is sort of the missing piece. So I'm just going to put together screenshots of the screens that we need so that she can more easily create the mocks for exactly what we need in marketing. I'm waiting for a couple of coworkers to get back to me regarding some of the screens that we need, but we do have a marketing meeting in like an hour or so. So if they don't get back to me by then, I'll just ask them in the meeting. Today, other than getting these app store screens ready, I need to set an AV test that we're running live, which means there's some testing that needs to be done. I need to actually finish our OKRs. We had a marketing offsite meeting recently, and it was just a nice reset for us to realign on our goals and think of fresh ideas for this fiscal year. That was a really lovely time, but now the aftermath is I have to comb through Notion and just make sure it's all good to go. And it's reflecting some of the changes that we want to make that we discussed in the marketing offsite. And we also sort of looked at our OKRs for the year, what we've accomplished, what we decided we're not doing. And so I actually need to wrap up that OKRs doc to make sure that it is updated and aligned with what we are trying to achieve now. So there's a bit of a refresh that I need to do with our goals and our Notion system. Although there are tons of tasks that I need to work on currently, I think this is actually a pretty mission critical a step to before we start that because doing so will allow the rest of the team to also know what we need to be working on at all times without constantly have to ask somebody or reach out to me or our CEO or whoever else. So I'm gonna work on that today. And then the last mini task is I need to review our app store prices because we did do a price increase I think two years ago and I think there are still some published like prices on our app store listings that don't need to be there anymore so I just want to do a comb through and just make sure that that is pretty much all resolved. Also if you guys remember I started eating these with my coffee quite a while ago actually but these are the quadratinis and I found an espresso flavor and it is so good. I think the first one that I tried was the hazelnut flavor and of course that one's amazing. It's like Ferrero Rocher goodness but this one is just chef's kiss like might be my favorite one. The cream in these wafers actually contains a blend of 100% arabica beans so there's actually coffee in these. Go and get them because these with your coffee in the morning mm -mm, nothing beats that. It's so good. I have my marketing meeting now. Do you know if Maria is joining us today? Uh, I was just saying, Angela says she'll probably finish the screens for end of day Friday. I forgot to film my lunch, but I just had rice and tofu. I'm trying to eat cheap and nutritious foods this week, so that was that was what I went with. 
I wanted to actually show you guys this ice cube maker that I got on Amazon. For those of you who live in an apartment where they don't have like a built-in ice cube maker, um, like their fridge doesn't make ice. But this is what it looks like. So they give you two trays that you can fill with water and then they just stack on top of each other really neatly. So you stick this in your freezer give you like a little ice scoop as well but what's really cool is the bottom of these ice trays are actually rubber and soft so once your ice is frozen you can see that the top of this it lid has this little pusher thing do this you have to put a little bit of force in but the pushy things essentially go into the rubber of the ice cube maker and when you put enough force it pushes the ice cube out of the tray you can see this ice cube tray is now empty and i have a bunch of ice so i'm gonna do it with the other one <laughs> yeah voila now i have a whole bucket of ice so i can actually just store these away because it does make it quite tall and it doesn't fit in my freezer like perfectly when I have the trays on it, but put my little spoon on it, put the lid on it, and voila, I have a little box of ice. I'll link this down below, but I do have all the stuff that I bought from my home in my Amazon storefront. So this is obviously in it because this is so cool. Anyways, the reason I wanted to make some ice is because I am in dire need of my second coffee. Mika woke me up quite a couple times last night because she has an upset stomach. So your girl is tired. Alright, our web developer got back to us with the changes, so it's looking all good now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start the A-B test now. As I mentioned in one of my older videos, we do use Google Optimize for A-B testing. However, a coworker sent this to one of our channels recently, and Google Optimize is actually no longer going to be available after September 30th, 2023. I'm kind of upset, but our developer who sent this to the channel actually is kind of happy with it because there were some sort of issues that he saw that made it a complicated tool for him to use especially when it came to implementing a b tests within software but for me personally I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really easy to use on the website side of things. Obviously, when you're diving into software, things become a lot more complicated. You have to make sure that the tools and frameworks that you use also are able to integrate with Google Optimize. And from what I understand, it doesn't integrate well with most of the popular web frameworks. So it sort of felt like this dated tool for him as a developer. However, for your typical marketing user, it was a really easy easy and free tool to use for A-B testing. But I think the most important part is the last line of this notice, which is we remain excited for the vision for A-B testing within Google Analytics 4, AKA they're probably gonna implement something within GA4 for users to continue optimizing and A-B testing for free. So fingers crossed that that is also going to be a free and super easy to use tool for marketers to A-B test. I do think that A-B testing is really, really crucial so I hope that whatever tool Google comes out with next it's something that most people are going to be able to implement and try on their own all right moving on we are finally delving into notion I feel like there's definitely a few tasks that I have been procrastinating like this notion cleanup as well as some videos like I spent so much time editing and creating videos for a, a period back in like November December that it's just been really hard for me to want to get back into that again. I think it also has to do with the fact that I create videos for YouTube and I create videos for Instagram and TikTok and to do that repetitively and then also have to do that for my job, it becomes a little 
too much of the same thing. So I think between the two tasks, I'd rather clean up Notion first. I'm actually going to take my flow timer, probably give myself 30 minutes, and just try to put as much focus and attention into this task as possible. I don't think that it'll take that much longer than 30 minutes. At least the cleanup portion, the OKR portion will take me a little bit more brain energy and time, but I think 30 minutes is a fair amount of time for the cleanup portion of this task, so let's go ahead and do that. take this five minute break and then we can restart. I think I'm gonna work from my couch for a little bit. I just need a, a break, a physical break <laughs> from being on my desk. Just can't, can't take it anymore. I've made it through my little notion cleansing, which is amazing. I mean, there's still a decent amount of stuff going on, but at least the tasks that we have going on right now are aligned with the goals that we are trying to accomplish this year. So I think that is a huge plus and definitely a step in the right direction with our notion board. So next I'm gonna go and review the actual like OKR doc. I don't know if I ever talked about this before. OKR stands for objectives and key results. I believe the framework of OKRs is actually created by Google and it's how they plan and structure their goal setting within their business. Okay so how it works is for each area of your business so for us there's like each of our software there's like you know social media can be a an area uh, maybe like community building can be an area but you can divide up the different areas of your business however you want but for each area of your business you essentially want to define your objectives your key results and your initiatives that will lead to the success of your key results and your objectives so a lot of the times i find that it's easier to work back Backwards. So instead of trying to define your objective first, start with your initiatives. So let's say community building. Your initiatives can be like, I want to interview three customers every quarter. I want to host one webinar every month. Essentially, the tasks that you want to achieve in relation to this area of your business. And you want to make sure that these initiatives have uh, like a either a frequency or a time frame. Like they can't just be like, I want to create more webinars. Like give yourself a goal and be like, okay, this is how many webinars I wanna do in this time frame because that is how you're going to be able to actually achieve it. You're essentially creating an action plan to achieve the objective. And then your key results are what you're hoping to achieve based on your initiative. So like if I'm doing all this work for my community building, then I would like to have 300 people join my Facebook group this year, an engagement rate of at least 4%. So you can set those numbers and you can actually measure if your initiatives are making a difference in your business. And then your objective is like the overarching, what are you trying to achieve? So for example, what I wrote for our community objective is to expand our market presence and improve upon our brand credibility by leveraging customer and third party opinions. And then I have some more information after that. What is the point? of this area of your business like if you're looking at social what is the point of social like what are you trying to achieve so your objective can be like to raise brand awareness around this new brand that we built and become a popular brand amongst influencers in the wellness space or whatever space you're in so give yourself that like broader objective and then your key results and your initiatives are like how you're going to work towards this objective which is going to be your why it's a pretty useful framework 
but obviously like any system or framework you have to follow it like you have to go back to it and that was one of our goals that we set for ourselves in our recent marketing meeting is just to remember to take a step back and recognize that these objectives are what we're trying to achieve because sometimes at least for me personally I can get lost in the nitty-gritty and forget why I'm actually doing these tasks but you want to remember your why because your why is going to guide you through everything and help you actually prioritize and decide like which tasks are worth doing which tasks deserve more time and energy etc so anywho we're gonna review our objectives and our key results and just make sure that we sort of finalize some of the work that we were putting in in our marketing meeting i've also got a little baby girl here hi bubs kept me up all night didn't you but you weren't feeling well okay i'm gonna do some work on that it's actually already almost three o'clock so i think that this is gonna take me pretty close to the end of my day all right i am all done with my okrs thank goodness so I actually was just thinking about social media, probably because I was thinking about my own as well, but for work as well, why I've seen a drop in engagement or like just overall impressions on TikTok. And so I'm doing a little bit of research right now into algorithm changes for both TikTok and Instagram. I haven't done this in a while, so I think it's time for me to just review what the algorithm is like, what our analytics are like, what the best times to post are like for each of our accounts. And and I'm gonna make this my learn period for today. I really have never actually researched about social media algorithms and I don't see why not. So that is what we're gonna spend some time doing. I'm gonna watch some videos about it. Which is making sure that every single piece of content that you upload has a call to action. Okay, I was marking off the things that I did today in Notion and I think some of you had asked for a Notion template on how we organize um, like tasks at my 9 to 5. It's very similar to the one that I have for my personal life because I built this system for work. Truly, I've just like converted everybody I know to Notion. It's the funniest thing. It's not even like they pay me regularly or anything. I literally just am a diehard Notion fan. Anywho, I thought I would just go ahead and share my Notion template with you guys, finally. Uh, it's actually kind of hard to create Notion templates because, you know, you can copy over your actual page to a template. Oh. But you have to get rid of all the data that's inside of it and create like demo data inside of it and make sure that things still point to it. And it's really tough because obviously I've built our Notion system at work to uh, like for each database to speak to each other, but it's not going to be very helpful or applicable to anyone else other than people in our team. So certain databases, I'm just like, there's no point in me sharing this. But at the same time, then I need to remove it and then carefully comb through each database to make sure like that the places that that database was backlinked or referred to or like whatever or rolled up to like just there's so many little does that, like there's so many little connections that I have to work through to make sure that the template still works well when I'm just sharing the, the parts that are important and that would actually matter to you. Anyways, no excuses, no excuses. I have the template done for you guys. Well, I'll have it done for you guys by the time this video goes up. So make sure you check the description box for the Notion template that I use to organize all of my tasks in marketing at my nine to five working in tech at a software company. It's also really helpful to have a system like this when you are working remotely so that you can actually keep track of tasks with your team and there can be less confusion about what everyone is working on, what how the projects are doing, what tasks are being accomplished. And plus Notion obviously has the ability for you to comment and talk to people. So that is such a plus for remote teams. Look at how this girl is stretched out on the couch as if it's just her couch now. I mean, it pretty much is. I've been really focusing on creating video content for TikTok and Instagram lately. So if you guys want to see what I'm doing when I'm not making long form content on YouTube, I have a few videos up on my TikTok and Instagram specifically related to this job. I have a day in the life in Vancouver, Canada, I where I actually I went into a co-working space to have our quarterly offsite meetings and I vlogged that day. So 
I'm gonna link that in the description box below. I also make videos where I talk about um, books and sort of the key points that I learned. And there's just tons of vlogs of me cleaning up and resetting my life and it's all content that's related to what I talk on here. So if you guys want to check it out, my Instagram handle is here and my TikTok handle is here. And obviously they're both linked in my description. I'd really appreciate it if you guys go and check it out because I've been working really hard on it and the algorithm has been shitty. And yeah, go and support me if you would like. Oh. I've been popping in a little while. I made some Szechuan noodles with some baby bok choy for dinner. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here. I'm just gonna eat, probably do a little bit of work. And then there's this book that I want to finish tonight. I'm really close to being done. It's called Giovanni's Room. And I am literally 50 pages from being done. So 100% I'm gonna finish it tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay. That's everything. I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. Make sure to let me know if you have any questions about anything that I talked about today. And I hope you guys enjoyed the Notion template. Bye.